than uh, right, right in, uh, in Antigua. Well, this is what we're going to look at now. The fifth test match in Antigua, 110 in all, 100 of 56 balls, the fewest ever in test match cricket for a century. John Embry suffering there, and then the first of half a dozen sixes as Ellison sees a perfectly respectable delivery dispatched from the middle of the bat. They always say that the best batsmen let the top hand dominate their shots. Richards puts that theory to the ultimate test. A six that time, and then the one-arm bandit struck again for a four. Embry must have been wondering what to bowl next. A full toss was not the answer. Ian Botham found that his 354 test wickets counted for nothing when he bowled to Richards. A mighty blow into the top tier of the stand. Graham Gooch could have perhaps chosen a more diplomatic moment to offer a plan to Botham, who seemed to be suggesting that Gooch's best hope of taking a catch might be to go to the region of Roe, seat 26. He settles for three men in the arc between long off and deep extra cover. And then he bowls a slow half volley outside leg stump, and that too goes for six. A high percentage of Richard's runs had come in boundaries, but refreshments were still in order for batsman and bowler alike. And that was all that slowed Richards down as he went to his sentry with a perfectly controlled sweep off middle stump. If Richards could have chosen anywhere in the world to score a sentry like this, his home ground in St John's Antigua would have been the venue, and the crowd gave him a rapturous reception. Richards' second 50 took just 21 balls, and in all he struck six sixes and seven fours. And this was the last six before the end of the innings. Now, Viv, in 1987-88 against Pakistan in the third test, you made over 100 runs in the match, and in the course of that became the ninth batsman ever to reach 7,000 runs. That was in your 94.